I'm going to talk about Plinko. Plinko is a Max for Live plugin that I created. It's a modular generative sequencer, and it's modular because it requires the use of MonoMod, another plugin that I created. Um, MonoMod is basically a plugin that allows you to connect a couple of different control surfaces, the launch pad or an iPad with a custom touch OSC script, um, and interact with uh, Live's API. Uh, I loaded the MonoMod simple because I don't need to use any of the aspects of its API functionality except for communicating back and forth with the launch pad. And I'm going to load Plinko right next, uh, right next to it. Normally I would rack this up so that I could send its output uh, to different areas of my live set with a no mount, but since uh, we're just going directly to a software instrument, we can dispense with that. And I'm going to load an impulse next door so that we can listen to the output from Plinko. I'm going to assign its input to Plinko's output and set monitor to in. Now I can move around the grid uh, with MonoMod simply by using the launch pad direction buttons. And um, Plinko has a channel. Uh, there's eight different channels because MonoMod can control eight plugins at a time. I'm going to set that channel to 1, and I'm going to make sure that that button there that next to no mount is turned off since I'm using the, the channel output for MIDI output. And in order to access MonoMod, I need to be in User 2. So just press User 2, and to pick what channel I want to edit, then I hold down User 2 and press one of these top buttons, uh, Channel 1 through Channel 8. Uh, Plink goes on Channel 1, so we're going to select it. And then when I press a button, I'm going to get blinky lights. And uh, let's have a look here. This is a node that I'm pressing, and uh, every time that you press a node, its parameters will light up. And basically, a node has direction parameters, which we can change directions by pressing the buttons around it. It also has a probability of happening, a note that it's going to output if it happens, and an output for that note if it happens. Um, you can assign any node as a loop start point by holding down the node and pressing the first button. And then it turns green. You'll know that it's a loop start. Now if we start the sequencer in live, then we should see a particle come from the cell that we placed a node on. And let's, uh, let's speed it up a little bit. These buttons over here are timing values. This is uh, one speed, two speed, four speed. So now we've got it on four speed. Um, this is a triplet button. I'm going to hold down that same node, and I'm going to change the direction. Um, when I add a direction, you'll notice it's still not going that direction. That's because the probability of that happening is still really low. So if I put it at 100%, then every time a node goes into that cell, it's going to go in one direction. And now, in order to add a note to that, I just hit one of these notes above the bottom. That'll be note 4. And we would be hearing a note, except for we haven't assigned the channel output. If you open up the channel output window, the program window, uh, each one of these columns from left to right represents one of these eight outputs, one through eight. So we're using the first output. I need to assign it to octave two so that impulse knows that we're playing something on it. Now I can quickly assign a little 4-bead loop by pressing this node, assigning its probability to 100%, and changing its direction, and adding another note. And we'll keep doing that. Now, in order to add some randomness to this, I can uh, change some other nodes by adding notes and not assigning the probability at 100%. Sometimes it'll happen, sometimes it won't. And I can add some more directions in here. And get some more notes. some more directions.
that's the basic functionality of how the plugin works. Um, to get more into it, you should understand that each one of these buttons here represents a plane. And even though the first plane is assigned now only to a probability of 50%, if it doesn't hit that, it's going to look at the second plane. And we'll put that at 100%, and we'll shoot the node off that direction. So now you have a two different choices that it can make. Depending upon what the random roll is for each beat, it's going to go one direction or the other. And in fact, you have four choices for each node. There's some other custom buttons that these uh, plane buttons are used for. I already showed you the loop start point, And I can change some other things on this node. The bottom button, or the fourth button, will clear the node in that plane. So I can add some stuff here. And if I go to plane 2, you'll notice that it's different. Well, if I press the third button while I'm holding down the node, it will assign all, assign all the properties of this plane to the other planes. So now that, and that, and that, and that. And in order to clear a node completely with all its planes, it's really easy. You just press 4 and then press 3. So that's the basic.